Um, welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admissions Counseling. We're so happy to have you this afternoon. We have an awesome lineup of institutions for you to hear from this afternoon. Um, so first of all, I just have some a quick housekeeping item. So number one, we know you have questions and uh, I want to make sure that you get your questions answered. So at the bottom in the Q&A button or Q&A box, you can put in your question. I do encourage you to list the college or institution that you're directing your question to so they know who needs to respond. So list your question and then um, put the name of the, the college that you're asking the question of. Just a reminder, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off. Our panelists cannot see or hear you. There are more sessions, so there's more sessions later this afternoon, and then there's more sessions for you to sign up for in April. So I would encourage you to sign up for more sessions. Um, this is being recorded this afternoon, so uh, this will be available for playback within a week at that same website where you signed up, along with the recordings from the other sessions happening today. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our first presenter, and you're going to hear from Arizona State University. Okay, thank you, Courtney. One second, everyone, while I get the right stuff shared here. Okay, and I think we're good. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is David Mills. I'm Assistant Director in the Admission Office at Arizona State University. Thank you so much for giving us part of your time today uh, on a Sunday, on a weekend, uh, to learn more about our institutions. Um, I am from uh, the, from Kansas and South Dakota originally, even though I live in the Southwest now. Uh, so I totally uh, know where you all are at uh, in your college searches. Um, I was there once uh, myself, uh, though I have moved since then to uh, much warmer weather, uh, which we will talk about uh, as we go through here. Um, but uh, without further ado, um, also no, sorry, I am the admission counselor for Kansas and Missouri students interested in ASU. Uh, if you are from uh, Nebraska or Oklahoma today, um, feel free to reach out to me. My information is right there, um, and I can get you in touch with your admission counselor at ASU uh, really easily as well. Um, so uh, here we go. Um, first thing I'd like to tell you about ASU uh, is about our charter. Uh, this is our mission. This is what drives us at ASU. Uh, we're incredibly proud uh, of this, um, and it's the core of everything we do at ASU. Uh, really, uh, to kind of uh, break down what you see on the screen there, uh, the overall message is that we're trying to be an inclusive university. Uh, in a time where a lot of schools are really competitive or really selective and, and tough to get into, uh, we are a proud public institution um, that is inclusive and allows students access uh, to that education. Uh, as long as you have, you meet our academic requirements, uh, you have that academic foundation, uh, you are automatically accepted to ASU uh, for a lot of our majors. Uh, some majors have a higher academic frame, uh, but if you meet those, you are still automatically uh, admitted to those uh, programs as well. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but the other key part I think on this is also making sure we're not just getting you to ASU, but we're helping you be successful during your time here and after you leave uh, with what comes next. Um, we'll touch on that here in just a second uh, as well. Now, with being an accessible university uh, means uh, we have a lot of students. We're a big institution, about 75,000 total students, uh, close to 60,000 undergrads. Um, what that means for you is um, what we like to see is all the benefits of a large university, but without a lot of the drawbacks that you might expect. Uh, so for example, ASU has a ton of diversity. Um, it's not just ethnic diversity, socioeconomic diversity, academic diversity, geographic diversity. It's, it's all of those things uh, and more. Um, we also have a lot to choose from. Uh, you have over 350 majors to choose from at ASU, uh, over a thousand clubs and organizations. Uh, we are a top tier research one institution, so a ton of great research opportunities, even for undergraduates. Uh, we are a big athletic school, we're the Pac-12, uh, so you get that school spirit, that vibrant campus life, that excitement. Um, so you get all those benefits, but at the same time, we never wanted to impact you negatively in the academic sphere. Uh, so for example, at ASU, um, we have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Uh, we have big lecture hall classes, but only roughly 6% of our classes are those big lecture halls. Most are going to be between 20 and 40 students. So you should be able to get a high quality education, but still have all the large opportunities and options that that big university uh, brings you. 
Um, now, I mentioned earlier, making sure our students are successful. Uh, we're so proud um, of our students um, and taking advantage of all the great resources they have on campus and the opportunities. Um, last year, for example, 89% of our students had a job within 90 days of graduating. Um, so again, seeing that success, making sure we're not just getting you into the school, but getting you on uh, to what comes next, whether it's your career, whether it's grad school, we wanna make sure we prepare you. And of course, uh, while rankings are not uh, the only important thing uh, to worry about uh, in the college search. Uh, ASU has some really strong ones from being number one in the US in innovation for six straight years ahead of some really strong competition like MIT and Stanford uh, to being you know, top five uh, public university in the US for that educational experience. Uh, not every program is a top 10 or top 25 major at ASU across those 350, uh, but we do have top 10 and top 25 ranked programs anywhere from business uh, to photography and the fine arts. Uh, so a lot to choose from at ASU. I'm going to pick it up and go fast here because I'm slowly running or quickly running out of time. Um, please know ASU has four campuses in the Phoenix metro area. We're in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, the fifth largest city in the country. Uh, because of that, we have four campuses uh, to serve all of our students. Depending on what major you study, you have a home base. Uh, that home base um, is going to be where you're at for four years, living, taking classes, joining clubs. But if there's something else that you want to do at another institution, you have that ability, or sorry, at another campus, you have that ability. You're a Sun Devil and you're admitted to all four campuses. So anything you want to do, there's a free shuttle that connects them seven days a week, whether it's a football game, a fun class, another club. Uh, you can do anything at any campus, but know that we have anything from a really large traditional feeling campus, like say the University of Kansas in Lawrence, that's our Tempe campus, to almost a small private school field, like the West Campus with only 4,000 students studying there. So uh, drastically different campus experiences within uh, that large university. I'm happy to explain all that uh, in more detail, and I'll drop some links in the chat after I'm done as well. Um, please also know, I mentioned we have over a thousand clubs and organizations. There's a ton to choose from, from Greek life, uh, to community service groups, to the taco eating club, the tree climbing club. Uh, we have seven identity-based organizations. Uh, they represent and promote uh, the different cultural voices at ASU. Uh, so there's communities and ways you can get involved and build uh, across your time at ASU. Uh, we also have one of the top honors colleges uh, in the country, Barrett. Uh, I don't have time to go into detail, but know that is a great option uh, and our honors college, one of the top five in the country. Um, we are in Phoenix. Uh, great weather at ASU, 75 on average uh, throughout the year, so a little warmer than it's been uh, for you all lately, um, but just know it's a great city for finding a job. We are still accepting applications. You can apply through any of those uh, methods. Uh, you can visit our campus virtually um, to learn a lot more than just what I'm telling you now. Uh, and with that, I'm out of time, but I will drop some helpful links in the chat and answer any Q&A that you might have. So thank you very much again for coming. David, thanks to you and Arizona State. Boy, that six minutes goes fast, doesn't it? Every time. <laughs> Next up, you have the opportunity to hear from Dodge City Community College. All right, we're just going to set up our shared screen real quick. Sorry, give us one second. All right. Good. Wait for no. You gotta press. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Christina Frick, and I'm an admissions representative at Dodge City Community College, and I have Logan Gleason here with me. And uh, we're excited to tell you a little bit about Dodge City Community College and why our school might be the perfect choice for you. Hold on, we are having a little bit of issues real quick. It's not showing us what you guys are seeing, so we're gonna... Hold on, give us one second. Why it didn't get there? There we go. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. First off, Dodge City Community College is a very affordable option to get your degree no matter where you live. If you live in Ford County, Kansas, your tuition is only $29 per credit hour. If you live elsewhere in Kansas, your tuition is only $47 per hour. And if you are an out-of-state or international student, your tuition is $57 per credit hour. A big question that we often get asked, especially during the pandemic, is how much higher are online classes? And the answer to that is simple. 
The online classes costs are the same cost as face-to-face -face classes. Applying to DC3 is very simple. Uh, if you go to our website, dc3.edu, the apply tab is at the top right-hand side of the page. Filling out our application is free. And once you have applied, you are automatically accepted after the application has been processed. Financial aid and scholarships are important no matter where you end up going to school. And the priority deadline for scholarships is April 2nd. There is two, about $2.9 billion that go unclaimed by students. So apply for those scholarships. Our website, dc3.edu and scholarship.com have many great scholarships that you can apply for. Also, FAFSA is now available. And you can apply for your FAFSA on studentaid.gov. If you have any questions about how to apply or need to walk through the process, you can contact our financial aid office at findaid at dc3.edu. At DC3, our under, undergraduate stu student uh, population is around 1,500 students, so you will not feel overwhelmed with large class sizes, and you will have that opportunity to really gain that one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with your peers and your professors. As a student, you will also have the opportunity to make friends from across the United States and around the world. Currently, DC3 has 38 states and 24 different countries represented. Another topic we often receive questions about is our student housing. At DC3, we have four residence halls. They are Sheldon and Becker Halls, which feature apartment-style floor plans and Jackson and Coleman Webb Halls, which features suite style floor plans. Our uh, dorms are really set up nicely, and I would say they're, they're some of the best uh, junior college dorms you will see. Our current list of campus clubs give our students the opportunity to be part of activities that they enjoy. And if you don't have a particular club, students are free to create their own if it is approved by our faculty and president. Dodge City Community College is also home to 17 varsity sports, and we are home to two NJCAA national championships, 121 NJCAA All-Americans, and countless KJCC Region 6 uh, championships and specialty award winners. I'm sorry, our, our slides are not going, so they're just taking a little bit of time there. Another big attractor for our school is our two-year certificate programs, which gives students to gain experience and get on the job as quickly as possible. All of our certificate programs can be done in one to four semesters. And this next coming fall, we are adding more programs to our two-year programs. Our school cares a lot about your education and we want you guys to be successful. Our Student Achievement Resource Center, or the SARC, has free tut tutoring for all students, whether you are taking classes online or face-to-face. -face. The SARC is also, um, also offers free printing, computer labs, and quiet rooms. Um, we have great faculty in there that are always willing to help you. Along with the SARC, we also have many other resources for our students, such as TRIO program that serves low-income students, first-generation college students, and students with disabilities. We also have a great community of advisors here at DC3 that will help you plan your path for your two years here as a student at Don City Community College. And now that we have come to our time, our end of our time together, I want to thank you for your attention and also invite you to come and visit the Kong Nation in person. If you have other questions about DC3 or you need help with the enrollment process, please contact us at 620-227-1321. And you can also follow us on Instagram, DC3 Admissions. Thank you guys. Thanks so much, Dodd City Community College.
Uh, wow, you guys have already heard from some great institutions this afternoon, but we still have a couple more. So um, those listening, don't forget, you can put those questions in the Q&A feature at any time. You don't have to wait until the presentation comes along. Um, you can put them in beforehand. Just make sure that you list the college or university that you'd like to direct your question to within your question. So next up, I have the pleasure of um, introducing Northeastern State University. Awesome. Thank you, Courtney. All right, I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, so my name is Zephram Foster. Uh, I'm from Northeastern State University. If you've never heard of us, we are located in Northeastern Oklahoma. Um, so this here, this is my contact info. Um, I'd encourage you guys to write that down um, so that if you have any questions or need help with anything at all, um, you can reach out. Um, but so we're, I'm from Northeastern State University. Um, Northeastern State University is in Northern Oklahoma. It is a beautiful, beautiful campus. Um, we are the fourth largest university in Oklahoma. Uh, we are right here on the foothills of the Ozarks. So it's a very hilly, green, uh, beautiful area. We're right on the Illinois River. So hiking is really popular. Going to the lake is really popular. Um, Tahlequah, the town that we're located in, is um, a really beautiful city. It's, um, it's uh, the capital of the Cherokee Nation. So something just to give you a little bit of context before I go into specifics, a little bit of history of NSU. Um, we, are, um, we were founded as the Cherokee National Female Seminary. That was in the 1800s. And that building you see right there has been there since 1889. That is our seminary hall. So there's a lot of history here. Um, it is a beautiful campus. It's awesome. You can schedule a tour whenever you want and come see us. We'd love that. Okay. So I mentioned we're the fourth largest university in Oklahoma. Um, I always tell people we are the sweet spot as far as size goes, at least for me, when I was picking a college, NSU was the sweet spot. Um, we are big, but we're not too big. Um, we're big enough that there's over 100 different student organizations on campus, everything from art club to history club to Dungeons and Dragons club, whatever you can think of, we have it. Um, but we're also small enough that it feels like a family and it's really personal. So we have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, your professors are gonna know you on a first name basis. You're gonna know them. You're gonna be able to go to them, um, talk to them about, uh, figure out what you wanna do, what you wanna major in, um, or just if you need help with something, they're available and they are gonna know you and know how best to help you. So that was something that was great for me at NSU. Um, we have about 60 different undergraduate degrees. I was a computer science major. We have everything from computer science to art to history um, to music. Music's really popular. Our most popular uh, degree is education. Uh, we're kind of known as a teacher's college because a whole lot of teachers in Oklahoma. That is one of our biggest programs. It is really popular and it's really solid. So if you're looking to be a teacher, there's that. Um, we are also the only optometry school in Oklahoma, one of only 23 in the United States. So if you want to be an eye doctor, come to NSU. Um, it is a really prestigious program, and that's really great as well. Um, so that's all I'll go into there. But just know that 85 to 90 percent of your classes at NSU have less than 30 students. And uh, that is one of our big sweet spots. Um, the things I really try to hammer home is that it's, it's right there in the sweet spot. It's something that. Um, you're going to be able to find your niche, but also get plugged in. Um, okay, so we are a Division II school. We have 10 NCAA athletics teams, everything from football to baseball to basketball. And something that's really cool is all NSU students get into home games for free of every sport. So that's a really fun way to get plugged in, too. Um, tons of different clubs, art programs, um, theater, things like that. Um, and the, the town of Tahlequah is beautiful. If you come to her, um, San SU, go see Tahlequah, see the town. Um, it is just a great, a great, uh, experience and a great environment. NSU is really well integrated into the town. So you don't just feel like a college student. You feel like a citizen, um, of Tahlequah as well. Okay. So, um, I won't go too in depth uh, on the rest of that, but one thing I will hammer home before I'm done is, uh, we are not only the fourth largest school in Oklahoma, we also have the fourth lowest tuition. So we are an extremely affordable option and we have a whole lot of scholarship opportunities, especially compared to schools our size. Very, very affordable. Um, I got out of college completely debt-free. 
Um, I am really thankful for that. Thank you for the scholarship opportunities and things like that that NSU offers. So um, reach out to me if you want more info on those. I will drop my um, email and phone number in the chat when I'm done. So you can uh, write those down if you didn't get them earlier. Um, we have an honors program with honors scholarships that are awesome, that pay basically full ride. Um, there's also PLC, President's Leadership Class Scholarships. Those are the really big ones. And then we also have just general freshman scholarships that are all listed right down here. Um, so those are all really easy to apply for. Um, simple, streamlined process, and they are super helpful. So do not ignore those. Um, I've already talked about our campus a little, talked about how beautiful it is. We have six different dorms at NSU. Um, we have <clears throat> all sorts of on-campus dining options like Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, Pizza Hut Express, all that good stuff. Um, we have got all sorts of clubs, like I mentioned, as well as intramural sports, if you want to be involved in that kind of thing. Um, and we're a very diverse campus as well. Like I said, because Tahlequah is the capital of the Cherokee Nation and uh, because we were founded as the Cherokee National Female Seminary, um, NSU is actually the number one college in the world for Native American students. So that's something to keep in mind as well. We have specific scholarships and things like that for Native American students. Um, and then, of course, there's just always something going on. NSU is fun. It's lively. Um, and I'd really encourage you guys to reach out to me if you have any questions about specific degrees we offer or anything like that. Uh, so thank you guys for listening. Thanks so much, Zephram and Northeastern State University. Next up, you have the opportunity to hear from Seton Hall University. Great, thank you, Courtney. Just share my screen here. So hi everyone, my name is Sarah Campbell. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here at Seton Hall. I specifically work with students from Kansas, but we have other great admissions counselors in our office for the other Great Plains states as well. To get started, Seton Hall is located in South Orange, New Jersey, just about 14 miles outside of New York City. We're a medium-sized Catholic university with 6,200 undergrad students and close to 4,000 grad students. We're split pretty evenly with 51% female and 49% male students. All 50 states as well as 70 different countries are represented and we have about a 45% diversity rate. We really pride ourselves on personalized attention here at Seton Hall. Our average class size is just around 21 students, even for those intro class sizes. For example, your English class size, just around 15 students. Student to faculty ratio is 14 to one. And this does really allow professors to develop those relationships with their students and become great mentors throughout their time at Seton Hall. We have over 90 different undergraduate programs to choose from. All of our different colleges and programs are listed here. I won't go into any detail here, but if you have specific questions, feel free to add it into the Q&A. Um, I will point out that we have a lot of great dual degree programs. So if you're interested in getting your bachelor's as well as your master's, we have a lot of accelerated tracks for those programs. Regardless of what major or program you choose at Seton Hall, students have a lot of opportunity for hands-on learning, whether you wanna do research with faculty, study abroad, whether internationally or in Washington, DC, a lot of great opportunity for community service in South Orange. Um, we have WSOU, our college radio station and the Suetonian, popular amongst our communication students. We also have a market research center, mock trading room and sports polling center within our business school. So again, a lot of great experience before you even touch an internship. A lot of great learning labs and clinical learning labs as well for our health science students, both on our main campus in South Orange, as well as our health science campus, which is just about 10 miles from us in the Nutley area. This is a little bit more about internships and career services that we offer at Seton Hall. Currently in our database, there's over 17,000 internship opportunities that our students can take advantage of. There's 12 different career advisors that'll work with you on your resume, a mock interview, um, preparing your internship applications, and then of course, ultimately helping you find a job. Over 80% of our students have at least one internship before they graduate. Many of them will have more than one. And I think this is why we have such a high employment rate of 93% six months after graduation. A lot of employers do also come and recruit directly from our graduates. A lot of the top companies and employers are listed here on the slide. So certainly a lot within finance and media, a lot within healthcare and even in the sports industry as well. 
So a little bit more about campus life at Seton Hall. So we have over 150 different student clubs and organizations to get involved in. We also have Greek life at Seton Hall. So this ranges from social Greek life to multicultural Greek life to volunteer organ based organizations. So a lot to take advantage of as well. Um, we also have a great student activities board. So they bring entertainment to campus during the weekend on the weekends. So they'll have concerts and comedians, guest speakers come. Um, so it's really hard to be bored at Seton Hall. We also are a division one school. We're part of the Big East Conference. We're definitely most proud of our men's basketball team. They tend to do pretty well in the NCAA tournament, but we have 13 other division one athletic teams as well. We do also have 25 club and intramural sports for any students who wanna stay active on campus, but don't want the D1 commitment. And then in terms of housing on campus, we have six residence halls, um, as well as two apartment style buildings. About 80% of our freshmen will live on campus and then overall about 50% of our students will be on campus, 50% will be off. Um, a lot of the students who are off campus are right within South Orange area within walking distance of campus. Um, a little bit about the scholarships that we offer our students here at Seton Hall. So we give over $100 million in grants and scholarships every year. 98% of our students will receive some form of aid, whether that's federal aid, state aid, or Seton Hall aid in the form of a grant or a scholarship. All of our students, once they're admitted to Seton Hall, are automatically considered for a merit scholarships. These range anywhere from $4,000 to $20,000 a year. On top of that, we also have special scholarships, and students can apply for these directly on our website every year. And then lastly, just some application deadlines that I want to remind you guys of. Um, we have two early action deadlines of November 15th and December 15th. What's nice about early action is it's not binding, so you still have the freedom to apply to other schools, but it's nice to get your application in early and really show your interest to Seton Hall. We also have two regular decision deadlines of February 1st and March 1st if you need a little bit more time to work on your application. We also are on the Common App, but we also have our own Seton Hall application. Doesn't matter to us which one you submit. Um, we're happy to accept either of those. There is an application fee, but I included an application fee waiver here for you guys, and I'm happy to include that in the chat as well. We'll need your high school transcript and your counselor report, as well as one teacher letter of recommendation to support your application. And then um, typically we need the SAT or ACT this year um, as an accommodation for COVID. Um, and the lack of testing, we have been test optional um, for fall 2021 admissions. And this is likely something that'll continue um, for fall 2022 as well. Overall, we are using a holistic review when looking at your application. So we're taking into account all the different pieces that you've submitted to us. Typically our students come in with an average GPA of a 3.6 unweighted, an average SAT of a 1235 or an average ACT of a 27. I'll go ahead and add my contact information to the chat for you, as well as some links if you guys wanna come visit us for a tour um, or check us out for a virtual tour as well. Um, but it was great talking with you guys today. Thanks, Sarah, to you and Seton Hall University. Our final presentation tonight will be from William Woods University. All right, good afternoon, everyone. We've been having some issues with our server here at the university, so I'm not able to pull up my PowerPoint presentation, so I do apologize for that. But a little bit about William Woods University. And to start out, my name is Spencer Burke. I'm our admissions counselor in charge of the Great Plains area for William Woods University. So I'll be working with each of you throughout the admissions process. A little bit about William Woods community wise, we're located in Fulton, Missouri, right in central Missouri. We're 25 miles from Columbia, 25 miles from Jefferson City. We're 100 miles from St. Louis and 150 miles from downtown Kansas City, and we're about an hour from Lake of the Ozarks, so we're in a very ideal location. With William Woods itself, on the undergraduate side, we have about 850 students. If you include our online, part-time, and graduate programs, our total enrollment is about 2,000. We have a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio, all of our faculty have an open door policy, so they generally have at least eight to 10 office hours each week outside of the classroom. And we also offer free tutoring as well. So definitely two resources that you'll wanna take advantage of here at William Woods. Our average class size this fall because of COVID was eight students. So that's gonna give each of you the opportunity to get to know everyone on campus, our faculty, staff, other students, even more importantly, 
everyone here is going to take the time to get to know each of you by name. Over the last two years, our average placement rate has been 97%, so meaning that 97% of our recent graduates have either found a job or they've continued on with graduate school within six months of graduation. So our faculty not only do a great job of teaching the student and keeping them on track with the classes they need, but more importantly for preparing them for life after graduation. We offer over 60 undergraduate academic programs. Our top five majors include equestrian science, business, biology, American Sign Language, and equestrian general studies. As part of the admissions process, we require an application that's available on our website, and we're also part of the Common App as well. We will need a copy of your high school transcript showing completed grades through the end of your junior year. As part of our admissions requirement, um, we require the student to have a minimum 2.5 cumulative GPA. We're test optional for 2021 because of COVID. Our scholarships to start out, as long as the student meets that 2.5 requirement, the scholarships start out at $10,000 per year, and they could vary. Um, the, the amounts could range a little bit higher depending on your depending on your cumulative GPA. And then you, the student may be eligible for some additional scholarship and or grant aid through William Woods, and that's contingent on us receiving their FAFSA. Our FAFSA school code is 002525. And once I get the student's FAFSA, I send them an award letter showing their scholarships from William Woods, along with any type of additional aid that they qualify for via the FAFSA. One thing to definitely consider is to apply for outside scholarships. So anything in the community from the school, a bank, church, any type of outside scholarship you receive can be added to your financial aid and you can still apply for outside scholarships when you're enrolled in college as well. A little bit about the campus, it's 225 total acres, but with all of our main facilities, so the residence halls, administrative offices, and classrooms. Everything is all right there. So the farthest the student will have to go walking distance wise is five minutes at the most. 81% of our students live on campus all four years, and there's always some type of activity going on during the week, whether that be with an athletic event, a theater performance, art exhibit, horse show, Greek life, guest speaker, there's always something going on and something that's easy to get involved with. We have 16 men's and women's athletic programs. About 40% of our students are comprised of student athletes. We have four sororities and three fraternities on campus and about 40% of our students are involved in Greek life. We have a program that's called Woods Around the World. So a student can study abroad for two weeks during the school year. Two years ago, we went to Japan and Costa Rica. Last year, we were scheduled to go to Greece and Italy, but because of COVID, we had to cancel those plans. And then we were scheduled to go to Thailand and Cambodia this year, but had to cancel that as well because of COVID. With Woods Around the World, a student can participate in a program that's called Project 123. That's where the student completes 123 community service hours, and this will help pay for half of their study abroad trip. We also have a director of career services on campus that helps students with finding internships, jobs, also with help putting together their cover letter and resume as well, and if they would like to do a mock interview. So that's a little bit about William Woods University. I'll drop my contact information in the chat, and if there's any questions, feel free to contact me at any point in time. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much, Spencer, to you and William Woods University. I'd now like my, um, all the panelists to go ahead and share their, um, to turn back on their cameras. And I'm going to ask them some questions and we'll go round robin in the order that um, you originally presented. Uh, so what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start with um, David from ASU first. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, especially uh, all of you are probably sitting there wondering how you're going to do this next year uh, if you're juniors right now. Um, I'm going to say, honestly, what sounds to be the most obvious one, um, but uh, use your admission counselor. Um, if there's nothing else you kind of took away from today, every college out there pretty much has an admission counselor who's dedicated to your state, your high school, your city, you know, something along those lines. Um, and we're all very friendly, very helpful people with a lot of knowledge. Uh, we're not scary. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, and let us help you. Uh, answer questions or or help you make that college decision in any way we can because that's literally our full time job. So please let us help. Okay, so I would say um, go and visit as many colleges as you possibly can. But I also want to tell you um, don't count out junior colleges because they are honestly a great option for you. Um, I well Logan and I both actually attended Dodge City Community College and it was probably the best two years of my life. So um, affordable, I don't have any debt to pay back. So um, don't count out junior colleges, I would say. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it might sound obvious, but apply for every single scholarship that you can. Um, I didn't know where I was gonna go to college until the last second and I chose NSU because of a scholarship that I received. So even if you have other plans, you think you know where you're going or you have no idea, just apply. Most of the time when you apply for a scholarship, it's not binding. It's not uh, saying you're gonna go there for sure. It's just uh, something that's gonna help you and be beneficial to you. So apply for every scholarship. I would say um, don't be afraid to go outside your comfort zone. So whether that means applying to an out-of-state school or a school that maybe is slightly bigger or slightly smaller than you were originally considering, um, I think those schools really have a tendency to surprise you in that way um, and could actually be a really good fit in some cases. So two pieces of advice that I would give to high school students. Number one, is to visit as many colleges, universities that are of interest to you. Look at the programs that are offered as far as scholarships. And basically visiting those different campuses, getting a feel for what each place is like. So that way you can compare what each place is like, what you like, what you don't like about each place. And then it's a matter of finding the best overall fit for you. The second thing I would encourage you to do is to submit the FAFSA to those colleges, universities. So that way, they can put together those financial aid award letters to see if it's going to be the most affordable for you over four, five, six years, depending on the type of program you're going into. Thanks, guys. So I'll ask you to answer another question since we still have um, a couple of minutes. So either pick um, what's a fun fact about your college or institution or your favorite campus tradition? And we'll start with David again first. So I'm gonna go with fun fact. Um, our mascot was kind of two fun facts, I guess, rolled into one. It's about our mascot, um, but ASU, uh, we are the Sun Devils, uh, which we are the only division one uh, college that has the Sun Devils as a mascot. I love that it is a unique uh, character. Um, that mascot comes, uh, was drawn by a Walt Disney artist back in 1948 uh, and is modeled to look slightly like Walt Disney himself uh, with the kind of mustache and facial features of the devil, <laughs> the sun devil that we have. Uh, but very proud, very, very, uh, we love our mascot. So kind of on the same lines, um, ours is about our mascot as well. We just had our 85th anniversary and we named our conch after so many years, we finally named him Coronado. So that's kind of a fun fact that they went this whole time with not having a name because when I went to Fort Hayes, we had a name for our mascot there. So kind of being a part of that with getting a new name, that was kind of fun. Awesome. Um, so fun fact about NSU, um, it, you've probably heard of, famous country singer Carrie Underwood. Uh, she's actually an alumni of NSU. Um, and a lot of her songs, especially the ones that are more story oriented and tell kind of stories of stuff that happened to her happened in Tahlequah. So I'm not saying if you come to NSU, you'll be the American Idol, but I'm saying there's a chance. So that one's hard to beat. Um, so for Seton Hall, 
Um, we are often ranked number one for Christmas traditions and Christmas spirit. Um, and every year we have a tree on campus that we light up. It has almost as many lights as the Rockefeller tree in New York City. Um, and we have carolers sing and student groups on, on campus will sing and do a to toy drive and things like that um, around the holidays. So that's always really fun. My favorite tradition here at William Woods University is known as the Ivy Ceremony. This takes place on the day of graduation where our graduates walk from the south end of the campus to the north end of the campus and they're all walking holding a holding a chain of ivy and right before the ceremony our university president cuts off a piece of that ivy chain gives that to each member of the graduating class and they use that as a metaphor for that way the student takes a piece of William Woods with them upon graduation and that's been a tradition the university had for over 100 years. Well, audience, I hope that you have enjoyed your the afternoon with um, this great group of panelists. And as was mentioned earlier, I hope that you take a look at all of these smiling faces of these professionals on the screen and know that they are here to help you throughout this process. Um, they are the experts at their institution. And so ask your question of them. Ask your question to all the schools that are, you're most seriously considering. Um, don't get that information from a friend's brother, sister. Um, ask the expert. So with, with all of that said, I would like to say thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Afternoon. When you close out, you're going to see a window that has a quick four question survey. So we hope that you'll give us some feedback. Sign up for more sessions. There is one more hour worth of sessions this afternoon. And then there's going to be more in April. So if you loved this format, which I think is really great because you get to hear from um, lots of schools in a short amount of time frame, sign up for more sessions. And um, this was recorded as mentioned earlier, and will be available for playback within about a week from um, at that same website where you registered. And um, have a great afternoon, everyone, and good luck with your college search. Bye.